The bow is a pretty versatile ranged weapon, and, like all ranged weapons, it requires a bit of knowledge of the inner workings of the game to really understand what you're supposed to do. It took me a long time to wrap my head around ranged weapons, because I could never be too sure I was using it properly. Anyone can pick up and use the bow, but to really excel, you need to know the weak spots of the monsters as well as what element they're weak to. Then you can pick the right bow for the job. Being a ranged weapon, you don't need to worry about sharpness. Bow is also unique in that you don't need to reload, except when changing coatings. Unlike bow guns, there is no recoil when firing. However, you will need to charge your shots, which takes time and stamina. It's worth noting that removing coatings is instant, but applying them requires a lengthy animation. While you have a lot of mobility when charging a shot, you will most often need to aim with your left stick and not rely too much on standing still to aim. This will probably take some getting used to before you're accurate. Bows are pretty decent when it comes to applying statuses, though if you want to be a status gunner in multiplayer, most would use a light bow gun instead. Remember, if you don't factor in all of the relevant mechanics of your weapon, you'll be doing much less damage. Doing less damage once or twice is fine, but over the course of a hunt, it can cause a fight to last twice as long or more. And of course, since you're using a gunner weapon, you'll be using gunner armor, which has more elemental defense but less physical defense than blademaster armor. You'll be taking more damage in general, so you'll have to be careful. The bow may not be the best weapon to start the game with, though it is often recommended as a good introduction for melee weapons. I recommend that you stick with it if you like how it looks or feels to use. That being said, I also encourage you to experiment. If the bow really isn't working for you, pick a different weapon. There are 12 weapon classes to choose from, 9 melee and 3 ranged. Try them all. Because of the nature of ranged weapons, I will be going into some advanced mechanics and calculations in this video. If you don't like math, turn back now. If you want to be a good gunner, you'll need to do a bit of research to find the right bow, the right coating, the right armor. It's more satisfying that way. To some people at least. Let's go over the controls for bow first, because I'll be talking a lot about the numbers in a bit. The weapon and armor I'll be using can all be bought from the equipment shop, next to the smithy, across from the item shop. Press triangle to unsheathe. Press square to sheathe. Press R plus triangle plus circle to unsheathe into a melee attack. Press circle while unsheathed to do a melee attack. This isn't a particularly useful move against larger monsters, but can be useful in clearing out small ones. Press circle twice to do a small combo. You can back hop out of the first swing pretty quickly, but the second swing has a much slower recovery time. The melee attack does slashing damage, and can technically cut tails. It also will apply whatever effect your current coating is, though I wouldn't rely on it for either of those things. Press X while standing still to do a back hop. Press X while running to do a roll. You can back hop as many times as you want as long as you have stamina. Back hopping is useful to gauge how far away you are from your target, which is important because of a mechanic I'll go over later called critical distance. Press triangle to fire an arrow, or arrows. This is considered a level 1 shot. Hold triangle and you will hold the bowstring back and charge up your shot. You can move while charging an arrow. Release the button to fire. Press square or X to cancel the shot into a back hop or roll, if you have the stamina for it. Depending on your bow, this shot will be one of three variations. More on that later. Hold R to start aiming. You can use the D-pad to change where you're aiming. This is useful when you really want to be accurate, or when you have the time to be. While charging your shot, once you are in a level 3 charge, you can press circle to do what is called an arc shot. You should be very careful when using these shots in multiplayer, as they can be very disruptive to others. If you hold R to aim, you'll see the area the arc shot will land in once you hit charge level 3. Depending on your bow, this shot will be one of three variations. More on that later. Actually, more on that now. Let's talk numbers. I'll keep this as brief and painless as possible. Like I said before, the weapon and armor I'll be using can all be bought from the equipment shop, next to the smithy across from the item shop. Let's open up our equipment details page and take a look. I know, this is daunting already, but bear with me. The pages I want you to look at are page 1, page 6, and page 7. Page 1 tells us how much damage we're doing and what element, if any. It also shows us what our arc shot is. In this case, it's wide. Page 6 shows us our shot levels. This can be confusing, so pay attention. The charge level is the number on the left, and is for the most part more important than the other one. You'll want to almost always be using the highest charge that your bow allows, and in almost all cases, that's level 3. This is because each charge level will increase the damage of your shot. Level 3 is a 1.5 times multiplier, level 2 is a 1 times multiplier, and level 1 is a 0.4 times multiplier. You almost never want to fire a level 1 shot. 
As you can see, this bow is capable of firing rapid and pierce shots. The third, not listed, shot type is scatter. Rapid fires arrows in a line, with the main arrow doing the most damage. It's great for hitting specific parts, which is good for breaking parts and doing more damage in general. Pierce shots fire a single arrow that hits multiple times as it passes through a monster. This is most useful on monsters that are long enough for the arrow to deal all of its hits. I'm talking about monsters like Royal Ludroth, not, for example, Great Jackie. Finally, Scatter Shot is a shot type that, as you may guess, fires in a scattered pattern. Where Rapid fires in somewhat of a vertical line, Scatter will fire in a spread out horizontal line, all arrows dealing similar damage with the center one doing the most, dealing less damage as the arrows go outwards. Page 7 is also very important, as it shows us what coatings we're able to use with this bow. The most important coating on this list, arguably, is the power coating. It will increase our damage by 1.5 times, and you should always use it when you're trying to deal damage. We can also use poison coatings. We're given them in the chest for this quest, so feel free to use them. Finally, there's one more thing we need to talk about, and that's critical distance. Remember when I said people will use back hops as a metric to gauge critical distance? You can kind of get a feel for how far away you need to be by back hopping, then feeling out a number of those distances. For scatter shots, you want to be up close, so if you're too far away, you'll do less damage. Up to about two hops away. For rapid shots, you don't want to be too close or too far away. Somewhere between three to five hops. For pure shots, you can't be too close. You want to be somewhere between three to six hops away. If you shoot a monster within critical distance, you will gain another 1.5 times multiplier to your damage. There are so many of these, if you miss out on one or two, it will severely impact your overall damage. It'll take some getting used to. Oh yeah, shit, arc shots. <sighs> to be completely honest, I don't really understand arc shots. I'm not a bow main, and they've never really made too much sense to me. Coatings will apply to arc shots, so I suppose it can be useful for building up status in multiple monsters? Anyways, there are three types. Wide, Focus, and Blast. Wide is the arc shot that our example bow has. It flies up, pops open in the air, and shells the area with little metal balls dealing damage. And if they hit the monster's head, it will also build up some KO status. Damn. This game's brutal. The Focus shot, I believe, is almost the same as the wide no, shot. No, 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 no. Okay. This is me after getting this clip, and I'm going to correct myself. I thought that focus would be a little tighter than wide, but it's way tighter. And I've noticed the hits from the wide arc are pretty inconsistent. Sometimes it'll hit once or twice, sometimes three or four, I think. Who knows? Ask God. What I know is that this shit rocks. Here's my live reaction when I recorded this. Holy shit. Holy shit is right. Kind of slaps. Anyways, continue. This one also builds up more KO. Or, as the Japanese wiki says, after being put through Google Translate, decrease value. I'm pretty sure that's KO. I think. And finally, Blast is a special one that fires an arcing payload that will explode upon contact with the ground, or monster. This one's an explosion, so I can only assume it does explosive damage. If you don't know, explosives will ignore hit zones and are only affected by things like defense and rage modifiers. You can think of it like true damage. Huh. Maybe I do understand arc shots. I don't really have much advice on how to use this, but I do know that these shots will hit your teammates and can stagger lock them. So unless you're trying to be annoying, try and be careful when using these in multiplayer. I believe the blast archetype will actually send hunters flying away, so do with that knowledge as you see fit. Well, I told you there would be math and numbers. Are you traumatized yet? I hope it makes sense why it's always taken me so long to cover ranged weapons. There's a lot of preliminary things I need to cover before I can set you loose on the world. The monster hunt. Unlike melee weapons where I can just tell you the strong attacks you want to use and then you just figure out when to use them, there's a lot more going on with ranged weapons, so don't feel discouraged if you're a little overwhelmed. Everyone is at first. It took me forever to figure out ranged weapons, but they can be pretty fun. Okay, enough talking. Let's go hunt a great jaggy. Uh, okay, a little more talking. For bows and bow guns, you need to bring your own ammunition. This is non-negotiable. For bows, that's coatings, and if you were paying attention, you need power coatings. You can hold 50, so buy 50 from the general store and you'll be good to go. You do not want to do a hunt without power coatings, believe me. It can be done, but there's no real reason to do it unless you're just, like, wasting time.
Madam Momo. <laughs> As always, take useful items from the blue box. Great Jaggy should start in Area 5. We can get there through the shortcut and camp to Area 7. Don't forget the poison coatings in the box, and you should apply power or poison coatings now. Stamina is very important for bow users, so be sure to keep your stamina topped off with rations and steak. All bows can use paint coatings, but paintballs are much more convenient, if you don't miss. I'm going to try and use the flash bomb and the bow's melee attack to try and clear out some of the Jaggy and Jaggia. If you've seen my Freedom Unite bow guide, this may sound funny, but I've since learned more about the game, about myself. Remember, the second hit deals more damage, so try and work that in. Keep in mind that Great Jaggy will try and call for help throughout this fight. It won't always be practical to clear out his minions each time. I think that may be a weakness of the bow that other weapons, even the bow guns, don't really have. Flash bombs affect Great Jaggy for 20 seconds initially. It affects the Jaggia for 30 seconds. So, after some practice, literally one hunt, I kind of figured out where to work in arc shots. Great Jaggy wants to stick to you like glue, but every now and then he'll stop in place, either to catch his breath or taunt, or to do his roar. Like that. Those are your moments, if you're far enough away, to use an arc shot. There's two problems you'll likely run into in this hunt. Dealing with his minions, and getting far enough away from him. He doesn't give you much room to breathe. Now that his minions are taken care of, we should be able to fight Great Jaggy for, say, 45 seconds before he decides to run away, give or take. Be careful when you decide to pull back an arrow. Starting to charge your shot will lock you in place for about two thirds of a second. That's a very long time. If you're familiar with Greatsword, treat it like sheathing your Greatsword after an attack. You don't always want to do it immediately. Try and be smart. That's an example of being too close to use an arc shot. It's rough. Be sure to roll or back hop out of a charge before you run out of stamina, or you'll waste your shot. Either that, or at least be aiming at the monster. Be sure to manage your stamina well. If you're low, just jog around for a bit. There he goes. I'm gonna use poison coatings now. Might as well. If you get lucky, sometimes you'll fight him in an area where he doesn't have any minions. Don't forget you have a free trap for this quest as well. Hopefully this gameplay loop is making sense. Use your shots within critical distance with power coatings with your max charge shot, and when he stands still, try and use an arc shot. In between all of that, avoid or otherwise deal with his minions, and avoid taking damage from any of them. Also, get used to aiming with your body. Since this game doesn't, natively, have two analog sticks, turning your camera quickly can be a bit of a chore. However, you should make large movements with your movement stick, then tap L to swing the camera around behind you. It's extremely useful, I do it all the time. You know first person shooters, right? Well, the concept of shooting is largely the same regardless of the medium. There are plenty of similar or parallel concepts you should keep in mind. Most notably, pre-aiming. It is much easier to hit a target, moving or otherwise, if you aim it where they're going to be in the future. This will take some prediction on your part, but that's Monster Hunter for you, to be honest.
Oh yeah, you can pull back an arrow right after the first melee swing. I learned that while making this video, Lamau. Lamau. Great Chaggy is drooling, which means I can paralyze it with the tainted meat I was given in this quest. You might notice I aim my shots a lot, despite saying that you should learn how to shoot without doing that. Well, I'm not good with bow. But also, you definitely should aim if you want to be more accurate. You should learn how to fire without aiming, with just your movement. Some players do a little spin to line up the shot, but using both methods when it's appropriate to is best. If I wanted to capture him, I would do it now, but I'm not gonna. Well, I wouldn't do it now, but when he goes back to his nest, you know what I mean. Look at that juicy pre-aim. Don't take that out of context. Bow can be really tricky to use, especially if you're new to the game or series. Remember that every monster in every Monster Hunter game has weapons that are better and worse against it. If anything in this video inspired you to try bow, I highly encourage it. I've always loved their little pose when aiming or idle, though I am a JoJo's fan, so... Yeah, I think I like arc shots now. I think I get it. I recommend you hunt Great Jaggy a few times and make his full armor set and upgrade your bow to the Hunter's Bow 2. That will be arguably one of the best weapons and armor at this point of the game, and will set you up for success. Take your time. Be patient with yourself. If you like how bow plays or looks but you feel like you keep missing the mark, just stick with it. You'll get the hang of it eventually. Until next time.